So if you look over here, what used to be completely open and no structure now has three frames. Hi, I'm Ben. And I'm MP. We love the ocean, so we decided to make it our home by buying a massive wooden schooner, which is unfortunately sinking. A lot of people believe our boat is doomed, but we refuse to settle on that thought, and we are willing to do whatever it takes to bring it back to its former glory. Join us on this refurbishing journey and wish us luck! Hmm. If you look down here, there's another frame ready to be put in, and another one, because on the other side there's still, if you can see over there, some frames missing, which is very cool. If we go down here, there's still a lot of wood to be used. Most of these are for planks, so different sizes from five centimeters, six centimeters, and I think eight centimeters as well for various parts of the hull and the boat. And then over here is one more massive piece of wood, which is 10 centimeters thick, which is gonna be used for more frames. First five frames are in place, three on the starboard side and two in the port side. So we put two new frames in here, but as you just can't cut all the frames out in one go, the next one are uh, down. So like you see, we're not going to cut this one out, for example. Now, even though it has to be replaced, we're leaving it because that's holding a bit of structure. <laughs> no, I mean. So now these two are put in, the boat has more structure, so the next one down can be taken out. And there it is actually, it's over there. That's going to be put in there, when a bit of space has been made and the boat's been prepared. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, nineteen, twenty, 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 and the floor timbers are going to be made to hold, to hold the first of our frames together. How does it feel having a boat that looks like a boat again? Ish. I'm so happy. Honestly, I look at Yaba and all I can see is the new frames. And progress. I don't see the rest. Like the rotten part is, is like they don't exist. I look at it and all I see is the new parts and it's super, super good. The feeling is amazing. Someone wrote graffiti on our boats. Yeah, what's that about? I don't know. I think it's one of our carpenters. Sonic the Hedgehog? Yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog, because our boat's going to be so fast. I've explained before in other parts of the boat why we are not replacing full frames or photics. Uh, here is a really good example, so I can show you why we're actually removing a piece and fixing that or bolting a new piece onto the old piece after cutting the bad piece off. That makes sense here. Look. So you can see this bit's the really bad bit. Uh, even just came off the nail itself. So there's the new bit, it's going to be cut about over here. Once it's cut there, this will be fastened onto this, so it can act on the extension. You'll see in a bit. So this is bad, this is good, this is going to be near, screwed onto there and cut here 
So this can go away. This is, I can always break that off with my hand. Why is it a foot of a frame? Because in Portuguese it's a... Pé. Pé de caverna. I'm quite a chicken when it comes to cutting metal. You're safe! You're safe now. What is all that stuff? I think people are wondering what it is. Yeah. We've shown it a lot. We show it a lot. We work on it a lot. Every episode, this is the main character, but we never talk about it. And every episode, it's the most frequently asked question. So it's time for us to answer. Uh, this word that we use is garapeira, at least that's how we call it here. Actually, here in the south of Brazil, it's known as grapia, but garapeira is the most used name. What is garapeira, grapia? It's a type of Brazilian oak, actually it's known as Brazilian ash. It's very related to IP wood, that's a Brazilian walnut, the very hard wood. But this, IP now cannot be sold anymore, it became illegal, they're protecting IP. And this is an option that is as durable as IP, but is easier to work. If I am quoting our carpenters, our sheep rice, they said that this garapeira has the perfect balance in workability hardness and durability so it is hard enough to be good for the boat but also workable enough for them to not struggle so much when cutting and sanding and stuff uh, the good thing about garapeta is that it's a wood that is harvested in an ecological way and every single centimeter cubic centimeter that we are buying comes with a certificate from IBAMA which is the Brazilian Institute of Environment and this institute, what they do in Brazil is put laws to protect the forest so when you get a certificate that IBAMA approves that wood it's a really... Uh, you can trust that, that's, that's something serious so we are really happy that we found this serious wood shop that sells us this serious wood because we wouldn't like to make it any other way and yeah, we, I really hope that that's the info you were looking for and let us know if there's anything else you want to know. I have two questions. Let me know. What do you think of the color? Ah, I really like the color. Yeah, it, that's something I should say. It is related to Ipe, but it's a lot lighter in the color. Wouldn't it be cool if we could leave our boat this color? Uh, I would love to leave the wood showing. First, because I think the color is very pretty, but mainly because it's so nicely done that I think it's a shame to cover it. Like the bow, you can see the planes are very aligned on both sides. I would love to let that show in, but we can't. They don't know that yet. They don't know we can't? That we have the lines aligned and showing. Ah, well. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> and one more question. You want to let them know what it smells like when it's being cut? Yeah. And it's a very funny... It's very, I think it's very funny. What does it smell like? It smells like Cheetos. Yeah, cheese. Cheetos. But Cheetos, not just cheese. <laughs> so, yeah, so a lot of cheese is cut in this shipyard. Bye bye. 
Vai. 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 before you see that the plank is really not doing the curve and you wonder will that ever happen and look it's done it's so cool it's unbelievable Hey guys, so before we get into this, I just want to get something over with and clarify. I am now slightly into the future. A lot has changed. I've shaved, I've had a haircut. Uh, we've had a lot of comments of concerns that we were only using nails, no rivets, no screws, nuts, nothing. Now what is happening further up the line, once the planks are going to be nailed on, is we have these screws. Now they are stainless steel. And we are going to put them in the planks onto the frames as well as the nails. I'm not going to go too much into detail because that's for more in the future of how exactly we're going to put these into the boat. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. This is just a quick video to explain that we are doing something else than just nailing. So these planks get added out, so one end gets lifted up and clamped to the frames while some <coughs> nails get hit into it. When the nails are in, this is fixed. Then about halfway or at least a quarter of the way, a bit is jacked up, so that bit's also sticking against the frames. Then more the more and more is actually against the frames the more and more can get nailed in already until at the end well when that's nailed in we don't need the clamp or the jack anymore then they can move a bit further up and so on until the whole plank is nailed onto the frames and that just gets repeated until all of this is covered right yeah and what do you have next to you here Primer that we're going to put in every wood and between uh, frames and planks mainly. It is to avoid uh, wood to get rotten and also anti corrosion, and it's just a treatment for the wood. Oh. 
Ahí va. continues to be built we already need to start protecting what's been done so I got this which is a primer that's also anti-corrosion and anti rottenness and I'm gonna start painting I think it's very mixed and I'm ready to start
we've finished step one of painting this, which is just covering what we can with a roller. Yeah. Uh, we've noticed the wood is absorbing a lot of this, which is a good thing. So we'll let this dry and then we'll have to go over it again where yeah. it's too thin or the places where we just couldn't reach with the roller and we'll do that properly with the brush. So and we're waiting for some more frames to get added and the ones behind where you're sitting there they're not done either but this is the first painting we've done on the boat yeah. quite exciting the reason we're doing this if you don't remember it's just this boat is quite exposed from weather and we want to just protect what we can so whenever new wood gets put on this boat or even old wood and we can protect it from the inside or with the paint Look how easy this was. Yeah, yeah, this is the primer to. that's for the weather, for the sun, for the rain, also and see corrosion and see rot. So you can put it on the screw so it doesn't rust either. Yeah, it's for metal and wood, so it's good. Yeah. We'll find out in a few months or years if it works. Yeah, and they will let you know. <laughs> So before we move on, we want to give a big shout out to Stefan and Dennis for becoming new patrons. And also Robbie and Marvin for donating to PayPal. Thank you so much. Uh, another question we got that why we're not using uh, steam to bend the planks. We talked to the shipyard owner from the beginning and he said that building one will be very a lot of work and also expensive. That we would do that if we had to bend the whole boat but because we only needed four planks to bend a lot it was just easier to use the fire and oil technique she doesn't mean bend the whole boat she means bend all the planks for the boat 